We made some important improvements to the user self-registration process. Please remember the past. Prior 8.1, we had a self-registration portal. People was able to add some data into that portal and send that to the identity manager. A new employee record was created. An attestation process was started and up to two decision makers. The first one was membership of a specific role had to decide and this person was as well possible to enter a manager and then this manager had to decide as well. And if both was deciding positively, then a user was able to sign in first time to the identity manager. Now, this standard process is extended in a way of that we added a thread for external users to the process. Therefore, a first change on the database side was made in the person record exists now a new per field, which is now named contact email. And this contact email address could be some email address, which is not the standard email address of a user. That means I can open the registration form. I can enter my details. I can enter as well a contact email address, maybe from Google or so. And then I can send the complete request to the identity manager. Same process as before, a person record gets created, it is deactivated and an attestation process gets started. Depending on configuration, then automatically the system will now figure out that there is an external user trying to request to get access to the identity manager. In this specific case, depending on the first configuration parameter on the slide, which is QER attestation approve new external users, this specific request have to be approved by members of a new specific application role. If this configuration parameter is not set, then a request is the approval. But typically there will be then the members of the role and will attest this specific user. Then automatically the user gets enabled and an email gets sent to the user. And this email contains a specific URL. This URL, first part of it, it's stored in the configuration parameter QER web portal password reset URL. This is the URL to the password reset portal. This URL gets configured. That means that gets a small add-on to that URL. This gets configured with a passcode. That means it is at the end, the combination of the URL to the password reset portal plus a passcode. And that allows us then to sign into the passport portal and to set our password questions and the password so that at the end of this process, we are then able just to sign in first time, for example, to the standard web portal of the identity manager. Additionally to that exists some other parameters. You can see them on the slide as well. The first one is new external users timeout in hours. And this is as well underneath of QER attestation. This parameter means that my pass token I get with that email, it's valid for, as default configured, four hours. That means if I get an email and I don't sign into the identity manager after four hours, I'm not able to do this anymore, especially because that token expired. And what I can do there is I can then click on a link and say, send a new email and I will get another email with a new token and I can then sign in with that token. This is something I can do until in the parameter, new external user final timeout in hours, the time frame is reached. That means, as you can see, per default configured for 24 hours, I can play that game all four hours. If the 24 hours are expired, that means a day after I started my request, I'm not able anymore to get a new email with a pass token. That means the pass token is valid for four hours as default configured could be changed. And I have 24 hours time to sign in first time to the password reset portal of the identity manager. After 24 hours, the complete process have to be started again. The last configuration parameter, mail templates, and then new external user verification. This is the parameter where I store the mail template, which contains the name of the template that gets sent out. And to get the permissions for that specific gameplay, I have to become member of the base rules, self-registration employees, application role folder of the identity manager. This is, by the way, a process that happens automatically. So there is nothing I have to configure. Again, this is an additional process to the already existing registration process for internal users. 
which now exists as well. You can see that here on the screen. The workflow shows now a left side, which is the new part, and a right side, which is the old part that was there before. Another cool feature in the meantime is as well to unlock accounts on a password reset. Please remember, if somebody, for example, enters too many times the wrong password, the account gets locked. The password reset portal is cool because you can reset your password, but the main problem here is if the account already is locked, it is not really possible to unlock it. Therefore, you need another action, for example, from support. With the 8.1 of the Identity Manager, we implemented now a process which allows as well to unlock accounts which are locked just on a password reset. And this gets at this time supported for just three different accounts. One is the person account of the identity manager. The second one is an Active Directory account and the third one is an SAP account. To do so, we just use a specific feature. So that means it is generic implemented and there are scripts in the script library available which are defined overridable so that you can change them if you are not happy with the unlock process as it is default implemented. Additionally, and to control the complete functionality, because the one customer might need it, the other one might not need it, there are configuration parameters we will see again in a second. And these configuration parameters allow then to configure the complete feature set. For all the people who are interested in technical bits, it might be of interest what exactly it's used and what we are using there. It's a generic process. You can see in the footer line how these processes have to look like. And these processes get feeded with a connection parameter and that connection parameter name is as well on the slide. And with that, you can then at the end implement the whole process. And for all the experts outside who mean they can solve that problem much better than we can or want to improve that feature is like always the ability just to change the whole process and the scripts as mentioned and to override everything which exists there as well.